Officers of Parliament Committee are set down for consideration. The House comes to oral questions. Question number one in the name of Marama Davidson. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Katu aia i runga i tana kōrero mō titi rawa o te mahi haumi i roto rātunga tū mataiti a nā runga i tērā we didn't know it would be this bad a mena kua pēnei rawa ka pēhia te nui o te iti rawa o te mahi haumi nei. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, much of that we could see from opposition, uh, as could New Zealanders in everyday life, as they saw individuals sleeping in cars or being unable to access health services. But what we are seeing now is in almost every portfolio, I can find other signs of underinvestment. Mr Speaker. Does she agree that the state of the books she inherited from National represents a moral and fiscal deficit, which we see every day in our homeless and unemployed, in our impoverished families and in our threatened species? Uh, Mr Speaker, um, yes. Uh, and being in government obviously is about making choices and about priorities. The last government decided that the priority, rather than investing in issues around unemployment and homelessness, was tax cuts, 10 per cent, a huge amount of which went to the top 10 per cent of income earners. This government has different priorities. How significant is the underinvestment in health? in light of revelations that there is sewage and mould running through the walls of Middlemore Hospital as a direct result of it. Uh, Mr Speaker, I would say Middlemore is emblematic of a much wider problem. DHBs are telling us that 19 per cent of their assets are either poor or in very poor state. Uh, and if you add to that the fact that they are running what will be an estimated um, up to $200 million deficit, I think it's fair to say New Zealanders in every walk of life will be experiencing issues with their health services. And how and has there been significant underinvestment in other areas of government spending, and has that impacted on core services as we've seen in our health system? Um, Mr Speaker, as I say, uh, health, I think, is emblematic of what's gone on in other areas. You'll hear um, today, for instance, uh, the Minister of Education uh, talking a little bit more about the underinvestment in early childhood education, which essentially has meant that parents have been picking up the tab from a lack of investment from the last government, and I'm happy to share the numbers. What plans does she have, if any, to restore investment in public services to urgently help those who are struggling the most, such as the 10 to 20 homeless people I spoke with who were sleeping outside the city mission yesterday morning? Well, Mr Speaker, as I say, we identified from opposition that this was an issue. We made a very deliberate decision to cancel the tax cuts. The second decision that we made was to run a slightly longer debt track than the last government because we wanted to prioritise investing in housing and making sure that there wasn't the scale of homelessness we saw under the last government. As I say, government is all about priorities and ours are very different to the last government. <laughs> Will the government consider any new taxes in the future to help solve these problems, given that it has ruled out any new revenue streams this term? Uh, Mr Speaker, as we've said, there will be no new tax regimes um, in this term of office from this government. Uh, of course, we do have the tax working group underway, but they may very well produce an outcome that could be uh, fiscally neutral as well. Ultimately, we have budgeted and set out a debt track that allows us to make the investment that is a priority, and we did things like cancel tax cuts so we could reinvest in health, education and housing. Question number two, the Honourable Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does